Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So today I have another watercolor process video for you guys. And just like the last watercoloring video that I did, if you prefer seeing a more condensed version, about like five minutes, and it's more just like sped up footage, um, you can definitely just go into the description and go check out a, I guess like the condensed version of this painting. Um, that video will not have any kind of voiceover, it will just have background music playing and the full start to finish of the watercolor painting. Um, but for this video, it will be me basically rambling a little bit about the painting, about random stuff, as well as more real time and just kind of like snippets of footage of this painting. So today I am painting 17's D8, um, or D8 Ming Hao. And yeah, he's actually one of my favorites to draw and paint. His features are just very like, I think they stand out really well and I really like his features as well as like his whole aesthetic because he's a very like artsy person. He's into fashion, he's into like painting and like visual media and he's into like dancing and performative arts. It's just like he's a very artsy person. So I really love doing um, paintings or like different kind of mediums of drawings and stuff of D8 because of his artsy side. I think it just fits really well. So, um, I did do something similar to the Dogon painting. So I didn't film the iPad portion or the sketching portion. So in my sketchbook, I actually had thumbnails of like a pose, a bit of flowers and stuff that I wanted potentially to do for this painting. And then I did the same thing where I took it into Procreate and decided to do a much cleaner sketch so that in the end I could just print it out onto tracing paper and then using my Gaoman light pad I will transfer those lines that I had on the tracing paper onto watercoloring paper so I have a nice clean sketch to um, basically paint over. So this method just helps so that you don't have excess graphite um, basically floating around on your watercoloring paper so you don't have to worry about mostly like any smudging or if any of the graphite kind of bleeds into your watercolor when you overlay water on top because as long as you're not pressing down super duper hard with your pencils you shouldn't be laying too much graphite down anyways like excess graphite from doing like simple lines because I did just do basically just the outlines. I didn't do any shading or like line weight or anything. I just need an indication of where to put down my colors. So I do apologize that there is a bunch of different um, lighting changes. For like the first portion of this video, it will be kind of this weird like night light kind of situation so I was really excited to paint this and a little bit nervous so I wanted to start a little bit earlier on this painting and I did it on the same day that I did the sketch and the reason being that I wanted to start early um, was because I was really excited to paint this like um, I don't do this kind of color palette as often I usually don't go super dark with my paintings my paintings usually just stay in like the mid-range um, mid-tone I guess. I usually don't go very dark with the background or like with the subject or anything um, so I did go with a darker moodier background this time but I didn't want to go too dark um, as his hair color. So Ming Hao's hair or I guess let's explain this. Um, there's a specific outfit that I really like from Ming Hao so he has this really long black hair like a mullet basically really stylish really cool. Um, I did change his earrings to be more of like these delicate dangling um, longer earrings just because I didn't want to draw the hoop earrings. I just thought they would get a little bit lost in the painting um, But he's basically wearing this black turtleneck um, Sweater and then over top he has this almost transparent translucent blue like a light blue dress shirt that goes over this black um, sweater and in the photos that you see you can see that because the shirt is kind of translucent you can see kind of the black peeping through so I wanted to get that and that was kind of like the crux of my color palette. Now granted I actually had the color palette like planned beforehand before I chose this particular outfit. It just this outfit fits so perfectly. I knew I wanted to draw D8 with this hairstyle so um, anything during that era fit really nicely so yeah, I did have to adjust it a little bit. I think I was going to go with more of a warmer 
um, background and stuff, like a darker, warmer color, maybe like leaning towards purple rather than like more of a blue. But because of the outfit, I did learn like lean it towards blue just to keep everything looking a little bit consistent. Um, there's a lot of blue and black in this piece, so um, I actually really liked how it turned out. But yeah, my brain's just like confuzzled and I don't remember what I was talking. Like, why was this tangent? So basically, um, yeah, I did plan out the color palette and everything beforehand before choosing like the outfit for D8. So I did look up um, kind of like n any kind of flower that relates to the night. So Minghao has a song called Night Rain and it has like this beautiful set. Um, I believe it was for like his solo concert kind of thing, but I believe he released the audio beforehand too, like the Chinese version. And basically he's sitting on this, was it just like a kind of like a swing type thing and the background had a moon. I think that's what it is, but it makes it look like he's sitting on the backdrop, like on the moon. And it's like this nice crescent moon and like the colors, if I believe correctly, were mostly like blue, black, white, kind of like the night sky but like the stark whiteness of like the moon and like the stars and stuff it just looks really nice and it really fits with like his night rain theme how to explain this relating kind of like china line to the moon just because juni moon juni so this like moon jun he kind of fits a little bit better but for ming hao because of night rain i like to associate him with the moon as well so or at least like nighttime so these flowers that I was looking up, I found these night blooming ceruses. I don't know how you say it, but I'll put it on the screen hopefully if I remember. But they look really pretty. They're almost like similar to his shirt. It's like a little bit more translucent. So like initially I was going to go for that look, but because I kept darkening the background more and more, I didn't want to lose the contrast between the background and these flowers so in the end i didn't make the flowers look more translucent i kept just adding darker or not darker i kept adding and layering the blue the same blue over and over so i could deepen the color a little bit um, but i really wanted to keep almost like the purity of the flowers to be fairly stark and white other than you know indicating that these flowers have a little bit of depth and they curl inwards and stuff it's just i needed more contrast so as you can see like i started very pale with the blues and i actually really like how i handled the hair so this is kind of like the first time i not the first time i don't do this often so usually when i'm doing hair for the base color i like to do everything almost in one pass so the thing that I did differently here is you can see us establishing more of a blue um, highlight area as well as like stark white highlight for his hair on the right side. And I usually don't do this. If I did this, I probably would have done like bleeding a cooler black color into the blue like as I move from left to right. But I'm glad I didn't do that because I believe I knew I wanted his left side to be more darker like on his hair to be fairly dark and then as you move to the right i wanted to expose more of that blue i just think because i had a blue and black um palette i thought it would fit a little bit nicer so yep now i'm adding in the black area for the hair so for the majority of this painting especially a lot of like the bulkier areas i did use my artist loft necessity size 12 brush which is a round brush and i did that because it does have a nice sharp tip for the most part but it holds a lot of like water and paint so i decided to use that so i could get a little bit more of a seamless wash when i'm doing some of the larger areas so as you can see like as i mixed my kind of like dark bluish black color i started to add more of some of my phthalo blues and a little bit of my turquoise into it so that slowly as we reach the the part of his hair where it parts um, near like the center of his hairline i started to fade it into the blue and then basically leave a little bit of white for the highlight to show a little bit of like a curving part just to show a little bit more shape um, now, because 
I didn't really want to bleed the skin color into the hair. Now, usually I would like I like to do this as long as the hair color is dark enough that the skin color can show through. Um, I usually like to bleed in whatever skin tone um, it is. So whether or not it's like the peachy color, a purpley color, more of a neutral brown color, I would like bleed it into the hair as long as the hair is dark enough. And this just makes the bangs, especially if it's covering like a lot of the face, it just makes it look a little bit like softer and a little bit like transparent, I guess, which makes it not too... I don't like having the hair on the face or near the face too like stark or not stark how to explain this to have super amounts of contrast where it looks like they're definitely separated i like making the bangs a little bit more softer so i wasn't thinking about that too much when i was doing this but i think it still worked especially more towards the left side of his bangs um just because when i go and really darken up his hair i leave the tips fairly untouched and that kind of gave that nice little softness that I really like doing usually so I guess I kind of just did it more self-consciously because I wasn't planning to do it because if I was planning to do it I probably would have bled in the skin color into his bangs okay so after I finished doing the like majority of his hair I started to do the bottom portion of his hair and the bottom portion of his hair kind of connected with his turtleneck sweater so I decided to fill that in I did something similar to the hair where I started off with the um, darkest black color that I mixed and then I slowly bled in more of my turquoise and phthalo blue color and let that kind of indicate a shift in lighting and I really liked adding like the darker tones here because Everything was very much like the same value for the most part with all like the peach color, the yellows, the light blue. They're kind of like around the same range. So adding in that black just really helps, especially like to find a lot of the thinner or smaller areas that are kind of more on the lighter side of the value. So like um, his necklace, um, the part of the shirt between his sleeve and his collar as well as the flower that kind of like drapes over his shoulder And then after that I did his sleeve or like the cuff of his the cuff of his sweater um, but yeah, so I really enjoyed this piece to be honest i think you guys would have saw this piece on instagram because i was super super happy how it turned out um at the time i was still writing kind of like the high of like the dogyam piece that i did so now that it's been like a week a week and a half i guess this comes out on wednesday so it's almost two weeks since this um, painting has been done. I'm hoping I don't lose the same energy that I had working on this to my Mingyu piece. I still haven't fully planned it out entirely, um, but hopefully I can start planning it out a little bit more. I'm still thinking of color palettes and stuff. I don't want it to be a super weird color palette that I'm not too familiar with, or I'm going to have a weird, um, I don't know. I just think like if I have another bad painting, it's just giving a really big kick into my confidence at the moment. Just because like the Dogyam one and the Minghao one were just like confident booster kind of paintings. Even though the Minghao one was definitely something a little bit more out of my comfort zone compared to the Dogyam one. Just because like I don't usually use this kind of a color palette and the amount of contrast is a little bit different. But um, I really liked it. And at this point, I'm still working at night, so I do apologize that the lighting's a little bit off for a little bit. And then lighting won't be too great for the rest of the video either, even though I'm painting like closer to the morning, early afternoon. But yeah, so I'm adding a lot of the darker, almost like a black color. I don't use, I don't have black in my palette, so like this is just me mixing my burnt umber. Um, a little bit of phthalo blue in my alizarin crimson and just kind of evening that out to get um, a dark enough color. Obviously, there's a lot more phthalo blue so that I can lean it towards the cooler colors. And I like adding the darkest hair color right under the highlights. It just really curves and makes the hair look a little bit more three-dimensional. So I really like doing that. 
and yeah, it makes the highlights really pop, so it's really nice. And because the hair color and the shirt color are pretty much the same, I decided to use the excess color to quickly do the turtleneck so I can do all the texture and show kind of like the ribbing or the cuff part of the collar. And then I'll bring that into his sleeve cuff as well. I think you saw me try to attempt to add a little bit of black um, into his, basically his like dress shirt. Oh, here, I actually forgot to hit record and I accidentally painted pretty much the majority of the eyes. So I do apologize that I don't have any footage of that. Okay, so this is the next day. So literally the morning following that last session. And as you can see on the right side, I have a weird tripod, like two legs of my tripod in shot. And that's because I was streaming on Instagram. So for watercolor painting, I enjoy doing that via Instagram. I don't like recording live streams to do traditional medium only because I guess there's two reasons. One is that Instagram's following, I guess, or like people who get notified or people who watch tends to be smaller. So it's easier for me to interact with you guys while I paint. And then the second reason is because um, Every time I try to record using the webcam and it's via like OBS and onto YouTube, I don't know if it's just, I don't have enough, um, like there's not enough, like the frame rate's just low and it's not getting enough footage to OBS or anything, but it's super duper laggy. So I don't really don't like using that to basically use it for any kind of live stream. So I like to use um, either my tripod or my camera arm to basically record or film during live streams during like on Instagram. It's just easier. So if you're interested in more traditional live streams, um, it's the same thing as like if I'm filming anything that isn't like on paint tool side, I will do that on Instagram. So like that's including like procreate sessions. So like when I'm drawing on my iPad and I'm talking to you guys or if I'm doing stuff in my sketchbook or I'm doing paintings like this, that'll be all on Instagram. So if you're interested in that, then feel free to follow on there. I don't like stream too often anymore. Um, but if I can, I'll try to stream at least once a week on Instagram for like an hour or so. But I usually like doing it if I'm painting for the most part. Procreate's fun to record, but because I have to do it fairly often for videos, it just gets a little tedious. So it's kind of more fun to be able to record a watercolor and painting video while um, filming for like live streams and stuff. It's just easier for me to balance. So Minghao's face looked a little bit weird for the most part until I started to add in the line art. I think it's because you just couldn't tell the difference like where his nose started and stopped and it kind of made his nose look a little wider because of the shadow color from like the shadow that's like under his nose and then to the left of his nose. It just looked, made his nose look really wide so adding in the line art um, definitely helps. I'm adding the line art for the hand. And so far, I actually really like how the flowers look right now, but I definitely think they need a little bit of line work um, just to make them pop a little bit. And I do like more of the graphic look because I'm not going for realism here, so kind of helps. Oh, so now that I'm adding in the line work for the hair, you can see the color difference between where the skin color kind of like overlapped with the hair just because like I had a little bit of bleed through when I was adding in the skin color usually when I'm adding like the skin tone to watercolor especially like the base layer I don't really care if I'm staying within like where the skin is I kind of just let it go willy-nilly um, unless like it's a skin tone or skin color let's say it's like more of a bluey purple skin tone because like I've done some commissions where they do have more of a non-natural skin tone so like blue green purple um and let's pretend like the hair is white I wouldn't probably bleed the skin color like everywhere <laughs> I would probably try to minimize the amount of bleed so that I could keep things fairly clean but I know because the hair is super dark it's going to cover a lot of the skin tone so I think this is the same thing when I was doing the shirt. 
I wasn't too picky about adding the blue into certain areas because I know the black is going to cover up that. I think I did that mostly for like the center part of his, like where the necklaces are and where the um, opening of his, ooh, the opening of his shirt and his sleeve kind of overlap. Just kind of like knowing where to place your lighter colors and knowing that you can always build up color so that things can get covered or darken. So just process of doing watercolors. So I'm adding some line work. And at this point, I think I was talking to the people in chat that were commenting and asking about like, um, I think the color palette, I don't remember what we were talking about, but I think part of it was like, I was trying to explain that I was going to do the line art. So I started doing the line art for the first flower. And then I think I was talking about how I wanted to darken the background even more. And that's what I end up doing. And I don't remember if it was already this pass or it's the pass that I'm going to do that gets really patchy, but I don't know. I'm not too disappointed. Um, oh. I think I talked about this in the Dogyan piece as well. Um, when I was approaching the skin, I did the stupid thing where I didn't let the skin dry once again. And I started to add more color and, you know, add those peachy tones, warming up the skin a little bit. And I, because I didn't let it dry, I started lifting up the color again. So I think that's another reason why I knew I wanted to do this painting as fast as I could, or like at least start so that when I do end up recording this, I won't, like I could abandon it really quickly and just redo it because I could just re-sketch um, the clean line art again from the tracing paper. So I knew like there was kind of like that back what, my, what am I saying? Like a safety net, kind of like a safety net. I think it's the same thing how I approach like procreate drawings. Um, I duplicate the sketch so that I have a safety net so that I can always restart if I don't like it. Um, so I'm adding in more shadows. So I'm adding shadows for the blue areas in his shirt. I don't remember if I make his shirt, like the black parts of his shirt, any darker that will pop through in his dress shirt. I might just leave it just because I do like leaving um, some more lighter areas, just leave a little bit more contrast. I think the painting looks really nice after I rip off the tape. I think it really needs the white borders. Now, I'm super lazy. I don't know if it's just because I'm taking shortcuts or I'm just like, I really don't give any crap right now, but um, I didn't measure the borders, nor did I make sure that they were straight. So I'm not too sure if those are or will be um, when I rip off the tape, um, but yeah. Okay. so. Looks like I ended the live stream and then I decided to do the white gouache parts off screen or off camera. So I'm adding highlights using white gouache and I think highlights always help. Um, add a little bit more contrast and a little bit more luminosity in some areas. So I love adding it, especially if I have like stark white highlights in the hair. I can kind of like feather out the white and add a little bit more like stray strands of hair. And then I like adding it into clothing. Sometimes I add it to the skin or the eyes. And I decided to do something similar to like the Dogyan piece and kind of do these white dots just to kind of give it more of a magical feeling. I really like it. It just looks more, I don't know. You know, like when, I think I talked about this, when dust kind of catches the light, it kind of looks really like, it looks pretty, you know, in a sense. So that's what I was kind of adding here. And it kind of acts like almost like stars. So I was very tempted to do something similar to this that I did to another painting that I would take like chalk pastels and like um, do a little bit of a rub of the chalk pastel onto some of these dots to make them look like they're glowing. But I know that if I print it or like scan it to print it, they don't show up as well. It just kind of looks really nice like on the actual physical. So I believe I did that for a Wanu piece a while ago. Maybe I'll put it on the screen if I find it. Um, but yeah, so here I'm gonna be taking off the tape and you guys can see that the white border just looks really nice just because the real nice contrast between like the background and this hair um, just is really nice. So. Yeah, I'm not sure how well I did with the composition because I did accidentally print Ming Hao a little too, bit too big on the tracing paper because um, I printed him on a 8.5 by 11 and then 
This sheet is also eight and a half by 11, so I did have to crop it in a little bit. I think it fits, um, but who knows. Um, so after I finish taking off the tape, as you can see, some of it ripped a little bit, but as long as you rip away from the painting, you should be good. I don't mind if the borders are a little bit frayed, but I just don't want to rip towards it. So I'm taking a kneaded eraser and just kind of cleaning up the last little pencil marks. Like I said, I didn't plan where the border was, so I have a lot of stray um, sketch marks that are kind of just popping through because I didn't know where to stop. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed watching and listening to me ramble for a little bit. It's a little bit shorter than usual, but I hope you guys still enjoyed um, watching me do this painting. And hopefully in the future, I'll either have another Masaki video or I will have filmed the Mingyu um, video. But yeah, some footage from my DSLR that looks really blue, but I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!